Welcome to this episode of The Week Ahead, where we're going to be looking at the global markets across the world with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Hello, Bob, and thank you once again for joining us. At first glance, it doesn't seem to be that busy next week. But what's the data telling us uh, for the major currencies next week? It's a relatively busy week ahead. But let's face it, there's one area of focus for the global financial markets, and that's private sector PMI numbers for March. They're due out on Tuesday, so we can expect plenty of market volatility on the day. Uh, obviously, the area of focus will be on the Eurozone and the US. We're going to need to see some pretty impressive numbers um, to support risk appetite in the US and the Eurozone, and we're not going to get it. If, if, the, if the PMI numbers from the US last week or anything to go by, uh, the Philly Fed and New York Empire State numbers, then it's going to be dire straits uh, for the global financial markets. And it's going to be the first glimpse of what to expect. You know, we saw the numbers out of China last week, industrial production numbers, and they were pretty dire. And we could see similar stuff coming out of the Eurozone and US to the likes of something we've probably not seen before. Um, and April's not going to be much better looking at the spread of the virus as it goes. So hold on to your seats and expect plenty of volatility. Well, it appears that the dollar is busy and will continue to be busy over the coming week. But what about the commodity currencies? H how are they faring? After a bruising week for the commodity currencies, it's a quiet week ahead on the data front. Kiwi dollar is going to be in focus as trade data for February comes out. Uh, we're expecting the numbers to reflect the impact of the China shutdown through February. Um, exports to China count for 28% in January. So a slide in demand from China is going to materially impact trade figures and obviously the New Zealand economy. We've seen the RBNZ deliver support. Uh, they're expected to deliver another monetary policy decision on Wednesday after the numbers are out. Um, so that's going to be key. Uh, nothing for the Aussie dollar really or the loony. So focus will remain on the effects of the coronavirus. Obviously, the private sector PMI numbers out of the US and the Eurozone on Tuesday will have a marked impact on risk sentiment. And then on Friday, we've got industrial profit figures out of China that are going to be another dire straits set of numbers for the, for the markets to digest. Um, so pressure's still on, plenty of volatility, and you know, obviously the coronavirus isn't going away anytime soon. And what about our Asian giants, the Japanese yen and the Chinese wang? How are they faring in the current situation? The Japanese yen week ahead is pretty quiet on the economic data front, uh, just inflation figures. We're not expecting much influence from that. Obviously, BOJ is in action. We're, they've been providing some support. Is it enough? No, the government's going to need to do some more. Um, obviously, you know, reverse the sales tax hike. That's assuming that people are even going to go out shopping. Um, so economic doom and gloom for Japan. Um, for the yuan, obviously, there's some good news in terms of the fact that the spread of the virus is abating. Um, and we saw an actual day where there are no new cases, which is pretty good news, um, demonstrating the Chinese government's success at containing the virus. That's in stark contrast to what we're seeing elsewhere. So there's still a bit of time before uh, the clock runs out on, on the US and the Eurozone to contain. Um, for the Yuan, so yeah, all we're looking at is industrial profit numbers at the end of the week. Obviously, we're not expecting great numbers there after considering uh, fixed asset investment industrial production numbers last week uh, for February. So that's going to surprise the markets a little bit more. Um, so the next real big thing is you know, political tensions between the US and China, which is going to aggravate the markets. And with all sorts flying around at the moment on the global fundamental front, uh, what can you tell us about tensions and trade wars at the moment? Political tensions are rising between the US and China, and it's all about the coronavirus and who, who did what. Um, obviously, China's accused uh, the US of creating and delivering the virus, virus to Beijing and obviously the, the country, and, and the US are blaming China. Well, that's playground stuff. But there's some implications here, obviously, if the US look to attempt to prove that it is China that developed it, um, it's, it's really brought the end of Trump's chances of a second term, unless he does a rem remarkable turnaround in the coming weeks and contains the virus, um, which would almost give him the second term on a platter. Um, so yeah, political tensions have been rising and there's some insensitivities here and expect the sh border shutdowns and so on to also impact um, political, re diplomatic relations and political sentiment globally, really, um, we could see tensions rise domestically and um, abroad. So that's going to be something for the markets to consider. And lastly, we can't not mention the coronavirus at the moment. Uh, with central banks and governments doing their utmost to keep the market stable, how do you see this playing out in the next week or so? With the coronavirus, it's going to be the main theme again. We're seeing governments and um, central banks deliver, but really it's now a case of whether 
um, measures to contain the right of virus has been successful and whether there's a slowdown in, in the pace of uh, the contraction of the virus across the respective countries. Um, if the continued spread gathers pace, then we're going we're gonna to see market risk aversion return. It's not really gone, but at least you know, we've seen the volatility ease a little bit. Um, that's going to mean a more stringent con- containment measures, and that's more doom and gloom for the economy. Um, so respective economies, it's not just the US that are under the hammer yet. It's the EU, the UK and, you know, the world over. So containment measures need to be successful for the markets to begin to be able to lick its wounds. If the spread continues to gather pace, then we're going to expect, you know, a marked deterioration in conditions. So that's something to really look out for. And then we're going to look at, you know, tensions domestically and over, overseas between you know, governments and nationalities as well. Um, we're already seeing anti-foreign sentiment build in various countries and that will continue further should the spread gather pace and the mortality rates rise. And that's never a good thing. National Guard, military and police involvement, you know, things can get quite messy. That really would spell Armageddon, in fact. So we want to avoid that. So a slowdown in the pace would be, would be a positive. Thank you for your input, Bob. A pleasure as always. That was the week ahead and we will see you again next time.